OpenSense 25.7.7 was released on the 6th of November 2025, bringing with it significant security hardening, performance improvements, and various refinements to the user interface. Now 25.7.6 was only released a few weeks ago, but if you've already upgraded to that version, then you're definitely going to want to upgrade to 25.7.7 as it addresses various issues that was introduced in that release. Sheridan Computers, IT, Communications, Support. So if you're using OpenSense in a home or a home lab environment, then you're definitely going to want to do the updates. If you're in a production environment, I did suggest in my previous video that you don't do updates as soon as they come out and you wait a couple of weeks. Um, anyway, let's stop waffling and just dive into the release notes and see what's changed. So let's take a look at the system and security enhancements. So one of the major focuses of 25.7.7 is on eliminating unsafe shell usage in the backend code, something that helps reduce the attack surface on the system massively. And amongst the fixes include the RRD backup mechanism has been simplified to avoid unsafe shell calls. This could be executing system commands, passing parameters, maybe unsanitized, now, this change actually emerges from a collaboration with the Zero Day Initiative. That just shows the importance of this security update. The recovery scripts now run safer command execution methods as well. So that increases reliability, especially in recovery scenarios. And there's a raft of third-party components that have been updated to the latest stable versions, which also mainly include security fixes. So this is Suricata to 8.0.2, StrongSwam to 6.0.3, PHP has been updated to 8.3.27 uh, and updates for libxml2, sqlite, unbound DNS resolver and a few others. Now there are some welcome enhancements here too. The factory reset page for example has been rewritten in their MVC framework and this now allows resetting individual configuration components rather than having to reset the whole system. OpenSense is more secure, more resilient and more maintainable. So let's move on to looking at the firewall and networking improvements. So if you manage firewall rules, aliases, or VPNs, then you're gonna find these enhancements in this release quite useful. So alias handling has been improved, alias IP address search problems and Unicode alias names causing edge case issues, they've been resolved. The firewall API now accepts lists of interfaces in batches, which is a big plus for automation, and multi-interface rule deployments. For IPsec VPNs, uh, status monitoring glitches like duplicate phase two entries, they've been fixed. CRL handling for open VPN certificate revocations have been hardened. DHCP via DNS mask now exposes additional DHCP v4 options in the user interface, giving more fine grain control over your network settings. The FRR plugin for dynamic routing, such as OSPF, BGP, etc., that's been updated to version 1.48. The Tega plugin for NAT64 moves to version 1.3, keeping those routing NAT features current. So these changes just mean that your network and your firewall are more reliable and give you better automation and visibility. Well, let's move on to the live firewall log. It's a bit smarter, it's a bit faster, but this is the part that fixes many of the issues that was introduced in the last release. Uh, so one of the most visible enhancements, the log viewer now avoids redrawing entries when the log pane isn't visible, and that improves browser responsiveness. Uh, host name resolution in the log filter view is now smarter. It only resolves what's in the view and doesn't resolve entries that have already been processed. Data ordering and display correctness have been fixed, so you'll see events in the proper sequence. New settings allow you to control table and history limits in the log viewer, helping manage performance in high traffic environments. The user interface returns to a familiar bad style for status indicators, allow, block, uh, things like that. So that just makes the log easier to scan visually. But these were the fixes that I was talking about that was causing browsers to crash in 25.7.6. There's been multiple reports of people on Chrome, Brave, Firefox, all having issues with the live log viewer crashing the browser. Now the changes are not finished with the live log viewer and more will be coming. For example, 
the header displays too is too big and displays too much information. So the live log view will be getting more love in future versions. So now let's move on to the user interface enhancements. So 25.7.7 .7 does bring several enhancements that will make the user experience generally better for everybody. So data grids, um, for example, in rules, routes, logs, they now handle window resizing and minimum column widths a lot better. So meaning less horizontal scrolling, cleaner layouts. Action buttons across the user interface now support icons, for example, plus, add, delete. And um, that just gives better visual clarity. They've also introduced new keyboard shortcuts on many of the pages. A for advanced, H for help. That just makes power users' workflows a lot easier. The GUI theme files have been recompiled using the latest SAS engine, so that's Dart SAS, which ensures more consistent styling across various browsers. A previously broken details button on the interface overview page has been fixed. It's small, but these polish fixes do add up. I should also mention that a small hotfix was released the day after 25.7.7 .7 was released, where config sync might fail in certain cases. And the broken details in the interface overview, which I've already mentioned. Before you do upgrade, take a backup of the system. In fact, if you're using ZFS, create a snapshot of the system before you do the update. That way you can roll back if anything goes wrong. And that's why I helped introduce that into OpenSense. I use that feature all the time before doing any config changes, any upgrades, anything like that. And then you can monitor the logs and core services after the reboot. I'd also suggest that if you haven't done already, sign up to the OpenSense forums and you can click on the announcements topic and then you can actually subscribe to the announcements so you can see yourself as new OpenSense releases are updated. I will try to keep covering them. Let's go ahead and do an upgrade from 25.7.6 to 25.7.7. .7. So as you can see, we are on OpenSense 25.7.6. So let's first start by taking a snapshot. So go to system, snapshots. I'm going to hit plus here. And I'm going to give it a proper name. So 25.7.6, so we can roll back should anything happen. We now have a snapshot. So we're going to firmware, updates. Check for updates. There's the 25.7.7 .7 release notes. I will leave a link to them in the description below. So scroll down to the bottom and apply the update. So tail scale has also been updated to 1.90.4. Key has been updated. You can see the PHP 8.3. Sudo. I believe we're done. There is no uh, reboot necessary. Let's take a look. So that upgraded with no reboot necessary. I always recommend that you do do a reboot after an upgrade, but you can see we are now upgraded. It's 25.7.7, .7, patch release four. If you're a business and you are looking for OpenSense consulting, then you can always head over to SheridanComputers.com and hire us. We are an official OpenSense partner, we can provide you licenses, hardware, consulting, whatever you need. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. It lets me know to keep doing these. It also allows other people to find them. Consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more OpenSense videos. I cover them a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.